I considered trying to embed wellness into um, my module um, I'm within the Department of Management and Financial Studies and primarily my students are financial um, students. Um, so I suppose to start with um, when we look at wellness within education, um, it, it impacts so many areas of our lives. Um, life rarely comes without any challenges, and of course, many of these we can't control. So looking after our well-being can play um, quite a large part in being able to tackle these challenges effectively. One such challenge uh, that wa was out of our control uh, is, of course, the global pandemic, and it has altered the students' well-being uh, realm considerably. And um, the transition into online learning happened quite rapidly, and it not only presented a range of challenges for staff, but for the students also. Um, uh, looking at embedding well-being across the curriculum in higher education, Dr. Deidre Byrne and Dr. Jessica Sordi um, stated that embedding well-being within the curriculum came long before COVID-19 pandemic and will remain um, long beyond it. The well-being project lists nine ways in which well-being can be improved. Um, so what I had taken was I wanted to introduce supplementary podcasts to lectures, and I had hoped to cover three of these um, listings within the well-being project and that would have been the opportunity and um, being able to present the opportunity for students to be exposed I suppose to, to uh, sunlight or nature or um, during uh, a lecture the option to it or, or to, revi to revise a lecture and um, the opportunity to take exercise or to deal uh, with stress. Um, Jane Nash had um, entered into research within this area and she described how supplementary video podcasts were introduced into an undergraduate um, course uh, that had previously relied on lecture-based teaching. Uh, her results showed that they were positive, it positively enhanced the students' learning experience uh, if it was used in conjunction with traditional face-to-face -face lectures. Now, in our case, we, did, we had transitioned on to online um, lectures, lectures. She also stated that it improved engagement. It allowed students to listen at their leisure to the discussion, uh, to discussion topics um, within different environments. One of the main benefits um, of using the podcast was that there was no requirement for the content user, the student themselves, to be viewing um, a screen. So it allowed the student the freedom of movement. Um, so they were able to listen to the discussion elements of, of certain topics that I was given whilst being free from their desks or the screen or confined within the four walls. It gave them the option to either um, go for a walk, a run to exercise, or simply to just to sit outside or relax in an area that was not uh, uh, predominantly their desk or the, the computer screen. Researchers have repeatedly, repeatedly found that um, there is evidence for improved mental health if people are exposed to nature. And that was the idea that, that, that they could release from especially long days sitting at the desk um, like that. There are various types of podcasts and, and, and different ways to approach them, um, various ways to record them. There's various ways to deliver them. I had chosen a monologue type podcast and I had used Screencast-O-Matic uh, as my intention was just to supplement the lecture and not really to replace it. So Screencast-O-Matic, what it, what it does, it, um, it's just an easy to use tool. It sort of records or brings the lectures to life through a video. And what I found, um, interestingly, for my students, the numerical end of my lectures, um, they absolutely loved Screencast because it meant that they could pause, learn at different um if the, the, the lecture was recorded and um, they could learn at different speeds, they could stop, rewind and revisit for any areas that they found difficult. Um, so it allows um, to, to record, edit and to share um, with students and uh, faculty, of course.
So what I did in addition to normally recording my lecture was when the lecture was recorded or the um, the, the, the question per se, um, you can navigate to the narration part and here it allows you to export um, the audio file, the WAV file uh, from that. So not only do you have your um, lecture recorded or the visuals of your lecture, but you're able to then export the audio file. Um, I imported the audio file up onto our Moodle uh, our virtual learning environment through the use of H5P. So H5P just has a number of different interactive um, um, uh, um, web experiences, if you like, that we can use um, within Moodle. Um, and by doing so within it, there is an audio um, uh, uh, the ability to upload an audio recording. Um, what I found was students really did welcome the break from the screen. They welcomed the confinement. Now, not all students, I wasn't aiming to replace the lecture per se. It was just supplementary to give the option to students. We had lectures that possibly four to five, six hours that they were sitting at a screen, whether it's project work and so on and so forth. So it allowed then for them to take, let's say a critical analysis of a new numerical um, situation that we had went through and go out and listen to it. So change environment, whether to relax in a different room or to go outside for a walk or to listen to it again while exercising. It also allowed to provide that visual learning environment for students who preferred viewing slides and not all students preferred to listen to the podcast. Um, the beauty of Screencast-O-Matic was that I was able to extract the audio with minimal uh, additional work involved. I know that we can record uh, podcasts using just a voice recorder, but it just allowed to provide both variants um, to the student itself. Thank you. That's brilliant. It, there's, um, audio really has had a, a huge comeback in the last while, Linda, hasn't it? Um, it yeah. I just see great traction for it. Definitely, definitely. And I was surprised how uh, how welcomed it was by students. I, I really didn't think it was just to, it, to try to... Um, embed variety into the lecture because of course um you know as a finance lecturer i might not be the most um exciting let's just say <laughs> so I, I was trying every angle but i was very surprised at at how it was welcomed and this is an area i'm hoping to to develop more research within yeah and i think that attitude of trying every angle giving a variety and not just applying one style or one thing you know one format in a course is what makes a course interesting for the students that are on it. Absolutely, absolutely.